What's going on, everyone? So, JJ Reddick said one of the primary reasons he likes lineups with AD at the four, as the Lakers use in the first quarter of their preseason Suns matchup, is the ability to switch him onto perimeter players. And this comes from Jovan Buha. 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 Yo, yo. So, Lakers, they uh, obviously have a lack of centers, a lack of big men. Uh, And so you're going with Jackson Hayes (laughs) alongside Anthony Davis. But it is something that I do think can be very valuable. It is something that I do think could work at times, especially with Anthony Davis. Right, Like Jackson Hayes, his energy, his effort, his ability to run the floor, his ability to, you know, he's trying to be a better rebounder and he actually has been better or at least so far through the first two games. Right, Jackson Hayes is a third He's not your second primary big. He's not your starter alongside Anthony Davis. But in a pinch, he's a guy that makes sense. Anthony Davis has made it very clear and has been very transparent that he doesn't want to play the center all the time. He doesn't mind starting at the center. He doesn't mind playing the center. He's not saying don't ever play me at the center. But he doesn't want to have to play center, you know, 48 minutes a game, right? He wants to kind of split and and divvy it up. And J.J. Redick, I do imagine, is going to divvy it up. And Anthony Davis taking more threes. He's got to consistently be able to knock him down, right? Because that was one of the beauties of him at the four in, in the bubble year, right? All season long, he wasn't elite shooting the three ball, but he was respectable enough to where teams had to respect it and challenge it. Teams are always going to have a level of respect just because he is a superstar. He is Anthony Davis. But when you start knocking it down with some consistency, then now teams really do have to have to go and challenge. Now teams really do have to go worry about it, right? So he's got to be able to continue to knock down the shot outside of 15 feet. He's still, since the bubble, has been money 15 in, but it's just he hasn't really been able to stretch the floor, uh, and you'd like that versatility, especially with Jackson Hayes, who isn't able to stretch the floor, knock down the three ball. Now, you could go with other options. You know, there is the trade front. Um, you know, the Lakers could really use a trade, go get a Walker Kessler or, you know, um, uh, Nick Richards or Clint Capella or something like that. Somebody that is more, makes more sense as the backup center behind Anthony Davis and would maybe make more sense slotted alongside AD. Now AD can pair with whoever that center is, whoever that guy is that you bring on, right? There, There could be some value there. Obviously, Lakers have to be patient in that regard. Uh, Most likely, it's probably Giannis Valanciunas. Probably my, if I had to like, uh, which center do I think will be a Laker by the trade deadline? It's probably Valanciunas. I would, Walker Kessler is my favorite choice. Walker Kessler is my favorite option just because of his youth, his ability to impact now, and also be a center of the future. It's where I'm at with Walker Kessler. But right now, we just need, Size. We need a sizable center that can come in and have an impact and and play multiple spots on the floor. Um, ideally, one that could stretch the floor a little bit, so you can free up the paint and you know allow LeBron and AD uh, on the offensive side of things be able to do some work, do some damage. But y- you, Anthony Davis is defensive versatility. Anthony Davis now being able to play in that scout role. Anthony Davis being able to have that defensive versatility of defending out on the perimeter to be able to switch and even defend and and lock down guards. His ability to be that rim protector, be that, you know, weak side help defender. It's it's very valuable. I mean, he is an excellent defender regardless. But then when he's not on an island and he's not the sole responder to, you know, know, lane penetration – He's able to clean up and do so much. He covers so much ground defensively. He just reads the floor so well. Um, he's able to impact on just getting out on the perimeter in the interior the entirety of the floor. And we've seen, like, you know, you take a guy like Anthony Davis and you put him alongside a guy defensively like a Jared Vanderbilt, and you're going to have one of the top defenses in the team. But you also have, like, Christian Wood, right? Christian Wood, when he's healthy and he's back, I think he should be. Um, I think he should probably get the the nod more times than not. Now, obviously, he's not a real seven footer, but he's more versatile. 
right, on the offense side and defensively. He's not terrible. He can defend out on the perimeter also. Uh, he can also uh, defend at the rim. He's not great when he's on an island, right? Like, if you put Christian Wood on an island and you ask him to basically be your last line of defense, he's not great, but as the help defender or if you're able to kind of funnel the offensive player into Christian Wood, then Christian Wood is able to really clean things up and make an impact on that side of the basketball, right? But you'd also have Anthony Davis as the help defender. You also have Anthony Davis backing up Christian Wood. And on offense, Christian Wood's ability to stretch the floor and knock down the three you could really open some stuff up. You could run pick and pop actions with both of these guys. You could have both of these guys be the screen setters, right? Like you, you just you you Christian Wood gives you the best Anthony Davis impression on this team, right? As like, you know, a center power forward that can do a little bit of everything on the basketball court. Now, obviously, Christian Wood is an Anthony Davis. I want to make that clear. I'm talking about just his ability, particularly on the offensive side, um, to stretch the floor, knock down the three ball, knock down the mid-range, beat a guy off the dribble, put the ball on the deck, right? Dump the ball down to him on the block. He'll go get you a bucket, right? This is a guy that is not that far removed from being a 17-8 and eight guy. So if Christian Wood can kind of get back, be healthy, I do like Christian Wood alongside Anthony Davis as your your center and power forward, and you can even flip flop them at times. You know, at times have Anthony Davis be the center and Wood be the power forward, and vice versa. Um, also, JJ Redick really talked about particularly on the defense side. So, like on defense, you could have Wood play center, and then on offense, have AD play center, right? And Wood can play power forward. So you could even do the flip flop in that regard. But J.J. Redick also talked about how much he really liked the defensive versatility and the switching ability and stuff like that with Anthony Davis as well as Jackson Hayes on the floor, uh, which bodes well for if the Lakers end up getting a big at some point. Right? Maybe not so much Valanciunas, right? Because he just he doesn't have the... He's not this crazy athletic, super solid rim protector that can just get up and do things. But he is a guy that has a lot of value, ability to stretch the floor a little bit, make plays is is a big thing, especially with the Lakers in the offense that they're running, and they do run a lot of stuff right in the middle of the floor, uh, which having a guy like Valanciunas that can kind of be that playmaker and kind of get you into your actions and sets, I think could go a long way. There's a lot of value in Valanciunas on this Lakers team, especially with what the offense is that J.J. Redick has implemented with this team. But... Defensively, you know, how does that look? How does that work? That's why I would prefer somebody that that can block shots and protect the rim, somebody that you can rely on and, and count on in that regard, um, to where Anthony Davis, yes, he can be the, the help defender, but he doesn't have to help every possession, right? Like, if you're constantly having to clean up on the inside, on the interior, then can't really defend out on the perimeter, right? Like, you know... You'd like for Anthony Davis to be able to kind of maintain that balance and have that balance uh, and that that defensive versatility, but you also got to have other guys that are able to hold their own and and handle their mess on, on both sides of the basketball. But you know, I, I I look, I like the idea of Anthony Davis at the center position. I just don't really like our options <laughs> at the center position right now. Right? Again, Jackson Hayes, I like Jackson Hayes. I like what he provides. I like what he brings. You never question his work ethic. You never question, you know, his his, his hustle out there on the basketball court. He'll do the dirty work. He'll play hard. He does does a little bit of everything out there. It, it, and, and look, Jackson Hayes has his moments in his times where he looks great. You know, you look at the Celtics game last year without Anthony Davis and LeBron. He was a huge, huge factor in why we were able to beat them that game, right? Jackson Hayes is a guy that, again, I like, just not as your primary center, not as your your main big man, even alongside Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is just so good, he makes up and masks so much, right? He covers so much ground, and, you know, you could put pretty much anybody. I mean, you could probably put Colin Castleton there, and Anthony Davis will make him look great, right? Christian Coloco, hopefully he can kind of get right because he gives you just better shot blocking, right? so I'd really like to see what Coloco and Anthony Davis look like, um, but again, it, you just you prefer a center, kind of have Anthony Davis uh, be able to slot alongside that center at times. Anthony Davis is still going to be your center to most likely start and close games. Now, obviously, different 
variations at times. You know, if you're you're playing a team that is closing with two bigs or whatever, like you know, you say the Knicks and they have Cat and Mitchell Robinson on the court, then yeah, you want to you know have Anthony Davis and another big man kind of offset that balance that. But we'll see, see how it all plays out. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, how do you feel about Anthony Davis playing more four? Do you like what J.J. Reddick says? You know, Darvin Ham never even considered it. Like, we never saw Anthony Davis and Jackson Hayes. I think they played, what, three minutes or something like that all season last year, something crazy like that, uh, which is bizarre. I just think you're going to see a lot more of it this year. Again, like, I think you'll see it with Christian Wood. I still like Christian Wood as your primary backup big. And I just think him alongside Anthony Davis, I think, would could work. Again, on, on defense, you can have Wood kind of slot in at the five with AD kind of being the help. And then on offense, you can have AD be the five with Christian Wood out on the perimeter. You can, you can have that flip-flop balance. And I just think it it, would, it will make sense and be very good out there on the basketball court. But I'm, I'm excited to see it continue. I'm excited to see more of it as the, you know, obviously preseason progresses, but even into the regular season, kind of see what, what comes of it. But again, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. It's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.